Welcome. I am a lay Shin Buddhist who nevertheless maintains an interest in the broader realm of Pure Land and Mahayana Buddhist teachings. My YouTube channel is called Akala Akala, that is A-C-A-L-A, A-C-A-L-A. -A -A. In these podcasts, I make a non-scholarly, humble, and sometimes bumbling attempt to explore a particular topic or question related to the wonderful Buddha Dharma. I hope you find them to be of interest. With that said, let us begin. So, as Pure Land Buddhists, our focus, clearly, is on Amida Buddha, also known as Amitabha, or Buddha of Infinite Light, or Amitayus, Buddha of Infinite Life. And of course, Amida Buddha is the Buddha who, when he was a bodhisattva called Dharmakara, made a vow that was the stimulus, the actual cause of the establishment of his pure land of bliss, where we will go and be reborn when we die. But let's keep in mind, too, that all the other Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, all the other cosmic deities, if you will, if you want to use that Western term, are emanations from Amida Buddha. And who is the most important of those emanations? I would say it's Avalokiteshvara, or the regarder of the cries of the world. This cosmic bodhisattva, who is the embodiment of infinite compassion, and who in iconography or artistic renderings of Amida Buddha always flanks him on the left side as a representation of compassion, he and of course later became a Shi, referred to as Kuan Yin Bodhisattva in China, which also means regarder of the cries of the world, he, Avalokiteshvara, is portrayed in the Lotus Sutra, chapter 25, as being available to us in all sorts of our various and sundry states of distress that are associated with this Saha world, this world of suffering, this world in which we experience various kinds of problems, including old age, sickness, and ultimately death. And of course, in Asian countries, at least as I understand it, this Bodhisattva Kuan Yin was revered in a much more personalized way in some sense as compared to Amida Buddha. Amida Buddha in some ways can be viewed as a, a more distant figure, but Kuan Yin appears sort of up close and personal, as a almost a personal savior in some sense, in terms of saving us from specific circumstances of distress. Reverence toward Kuan Yin carried on from China into Japan, of course, where he slash she is referred to as Kanon and also is portrayed as a female figure. Many of the Kuan Yin statues that you might see even in Western antique stores or even furniture stores show her in the form of a white porcelain figure. And there are several books that describe the various ways in which she is portrayed. I'm not going to get into that right now, but what I do want to get into is the fact that Kuan Yin first appears as a male figure in the Lotus Sutra, again, chapter 25. And what I'd like to do now is to share with you a sort of dramatic or even hyper-dramatic rendering of some of the excerpts from that sutra, specifically from the Threefold Lotus Sutra, published by Kosai. I hope you enjoy it, and it gives some comfort to reflect upon this wonderful cosmic figure who is available to all of us merely by bringing her name and image to mind. Namomina Bolts. If there be countless hundred thousand myriad kotis of living beings suffering from pain and distress who hear of the Bodhisattva regarder of the cries of the world and with all their mind call upon his name, the Bodhisattva regarder of the cries of the world will instantly regard their cries and all of them will be delivered. This Bodhisattva regarder of the cries of the world is able to make fearless those in anxiety and distress. Listen to the deeds of the cry regarder. He who hears his name and sees him and bears him unremittingly in mind will be able to end the sorrows of existence. 
the living crushed and harassed, oppressed by countless pains. The cry regarder with his mystic wisdom can save such a suffering world. Perfect in supernatural powers, widely practiced in wisdom and tact. In the lands of the universe there is no place where he does not manifest himself. Sorrows of birth, age, disease, death, all by degrees are ended by him. True regard, serene regard, far-reaching wise regard, regard of pity, compassionate regard, ever longed for, ever looked for, pure and serene in radiance, wisdom sun destroying darkness, subduer of woes of storm and fire, who illumines all the world. Law of pity, thunder quivering, compassion wondrous as a great cloud, pouring spiritual rain like nectar, quenching the flames of distress. His is the wondrous voice, the voice of the world regarder, voice all world surpassing. Therefore, ever to be kept in mind with never a doubting thought, regarder of the world's cries, pure and holy, in pain, distress, death, calamity, able to be a sure reliance, perfect in all merit, with compassionate eyes beholding all, boundless ocean of blessings, let us revere him. With that, I will sign off by reciting the Nembutsu, in gratitude for being embraced and accepted just as I am by Amida Buddha. Never, never to be abandoned. Namo Mira Boots. Namo Mira Boots. Namo Mira Boots.